Welcome back to Midco Sports Network's coverage of the Summit League Basketball Media Day here from downtown Sioux Falls. I'm Alex Seinert, happy to be joined by Greg Steeman, who's made his way from the break room, as well as Brian Jones, now in year 13, the head coach of the University of North Dakota men's basketball. Brian, thanks for taking some time this morning, and welcome to the league. It's oh, a yeah. big deal for this program. Excited, yeah. yeah. What was going on in the break, break room? I, was, I, I didn't even know there was a break oh, room. Okay. I was just lost. That's we keep it light here. We're new to the league. I can crack jokes. That's early. Exactly. Steeman's wandering the hallways here yeah. downtown trying to find out where he's going. Idea. Well, for the University of North Dakota men's program, an exciting time to move into this league. This has kind of been a theme for you, Brian, in 13 years, transitioning from the NCC to the Great West to the Big Sky. This is your fourth conference in 13 years. Does it feel like this is the one, though, that's going to stick? I do. It's the one that's the most natural, obviously, because of the rivalries and just familiarity with the teams that we're, we're going to be competing against, we've recruited against for years. So I think it's the best move, obviously, for our institution. But I, I want to be selfish in this, saying we're going to bring a lot of value to the league. So I think we're just going to only improve the league across the board and all of our sports. So uh, just the pride we have in UND, but what we can bring to the table, but also just thankful for the being a basketball guy, what the Summit League offers from a national perspective as well. Coach, you know, you talk about a new league. There's always going to be some unknowns, but there's, as you mentioned, a lot of familiarity with the teams in this league already. But when you come into a new league, how is it, how important is it to have a core like Marlon Stewart, Cortez Seals, Connor Avance to help make that transition, uh, not only for, you know, into a new league, but with a lot of newcomers into your program? How, how valuable are, are those guys to what you're trying to accomplish? Very valuable. One, just teaching them how to work every day. I think with, we have 11 guys who've never played a Division One game. So just trusting the process, how to work every day in practice, but also teaching them how to travel. Uh, which not a lot of kids know a lot about how to get into a scouting report. Obviously, some of these teams we've played in the past, but still we're still getting to know some of them more consistently. But just trusting the process of being young, but when we stick to that process and not the results, good things are going to happen for them. So you do definitely need uh, veterans and guys who have been through the wars, through the good and the bad. That's the good thing about this group, the three guys you were just talking about. They've been through the highs and the lows, so they've learned through those opportunities. And I'm going to lean on those three heavily along with Keenan and Billy as well because they're upperclassmen just to uh, help us teach these guys what it's like to be a Division One athlete and what it's what it's going to take to compete at a high level. Yeah, it is a unique roster makeup this year because you have those familiar names. Seals and Avance have been captains on this team now for two years and have been there and doing this for four seasons. Marlon Stewart, obviously people got used to seeing him make plays last year. And then there are a lot of new guys. It's really a, a new roster this season, kind of getting their first taste of D1 basketball. How have you seen this group mesh together in the lead up to the start of the season? Well, unbelievable off the floor. The mm -hmm. chemistry, we had some issues with that and I've never been shy to shy away from those opportunities to talk about it and, and it's, it's all learning. But this year off the floor, uh, unbelievable growth in chemistry, and I think that transfers over between the lines. Uh, but they've done a great job of, of picking our, our things up. I think this year's team is probably one of the higher IQ type teams that we've had, and the way we play, the style of play uh, that we like to play, it, it fits that. Um, and some of them are just battle tests. We have three foreign kids that have played at such a high level yeah. in their, on their national teams. But also even the other guys, they're just selfless guys. They're more about the team and just the system. We are system-based. We're a process-based type program. Instead of having one individual really shine, we want uh, you know five guys if, if selfishly being double-figure scoring-wise. So. Um, yeah, it's, it's been a great, it's been refreshing as coaches. These guys coming in every day being young, sometimes dumb, but that's good, right? <laughs> they want to learn, they want to compete. What they don't know, they don't know. Yeah. And sometimes that's a positive thing. So it's, uh, uh, every day I go in, 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 into work just excited to, where can we make strides today? Where can we help them grow today? And, and they've done nothing but um, uh, really embrace those opportunities. You talk about five guys that have played a Division One basketball game, but you did have a couple of guys that sat out last year and, and went through everything in, in, in Anna Moody and Carter Brooks. What do you what do you see the, the potential to, uh, of these two individuals to, to impact your success this season? Well, Anand is an elite shooter, and he will be an elite shooter in this league. I, I haven't coached many guys like him uh, in all my years, and it's just uh, there's not many guys who can get it off that quickly mm. and score in bunches the way he does. Uh, so anxious for him. 
you know, I always joke with him the things he had to learn was two words defense, which he didn't know that <laughs> word in high school, and pass. So it's just things where he had to grow in the offseason, which he's done a tremendous job, tremendous growth. Mm -hmm. he is, he's had such a great fall. Uh, Carter Brooks, uh, coming from a Division II school, unbelievable motor, and that's what he's, he's got to do all the little things for us because he's an undersized four, but boy, he brings energy and a motor and the ability to stretch the defense with his shot making ability. So he's done a tremendous job in the weight room and changing his body. So I've been very pleased with what, what they've done in the offseason and they're going to help us and you know that's what's really neat right now we're I think 17 practices in and it's it, not anybody's really outside a couple of the older guys have really separated themselves that just shows you how even these guys are and the competition has been very healthy yeah you mentioned some of those guys that people got to see on the bench some new guys that people have just maybe been hearing whispers of and got to see at fan fest this last week you know Jal Bajik's a four-star recruit that, that comes in I think people have seen him jumping over his teammates last week in a dunk contest What's kind of the timetable? Because he's a young kid and he's yeah. raw and he's a little bit thin. What do you see his ceiling as being and how quick can he be an effective well, player? Well, unlimited season? ceiling. Mm -hmm. He's like a blank canvas. He's coming in as a coach. It's great because you can kind of kind of mold him and that's what he's going to need. He's going to need some time. Sure. Um, athletically, off the charts. Um, can do things that you can't teach. You know, obviously you talked, he is thin, but he's probably, as long as he gets, continues to get stronger, that's what we care about. The weight thing probably, because I've been there, I was, I was a thin young person as well. That's probably not going to come until he's 21, 22 years old, but as long as he gets stronger. But uh, he can do things you just can't teach. And there's going to be ups and downs for him, because he is learning a new position too. He always played inside, now he's playing more of a wing. Mm -hmm. So learning how to play with the ball in his hands out of ball screen situations instead of just slashing to the rim. Uh, so, but he's had tremendous growth. He's been great offensively, but like all of our new guys, they still got a long way to go defensively. It's just the, the game is so much faster at the Division One level, and just our system is is not complex by any means. But it's just you know, getting to them used to doing their job mm -hmm. every possession, and you can't take possessions off. Coach, when you made your NCAA tournament run, you know, obviously you were a very dynamic team offensively, but it was underrated how well you guys defended. And that's what allowed you to win that Big Sky Conference championship. What are the differences between the leagues, and, and what does it take for you to get this team to that level in the Summit League, the ability to go on the road to defend and, and, and steal some of those road games? I would say what I've been impressed with, obviously you look at South Dakota State, and South Dakota the last couple of years have been at the top. Um, one, they were just so much bigger than the other teams, I felt physically and size-wise. Uh, but they they had the ability to defend and, you know, was very good offensively. So we're obviously when we were good, as you mentioned, we led the Big Sky in defense. So that, and that that translate into me sometimes easy easy offense. So we got to be able to defend and and just. Keep things simple. This year for us, because we have so many uh, new guys, it's it's all about being really good at our base, our you know being good at base offense, base defense, and, and really uh, simplifying things so they can be the athletes that they are instead of thinking so much to where their feet are slow. But no question, we got to be able to come in and defend this league. Compared, Big Sky is probably more of a kind of like the football side of things. The, the offense is at a high level. Defense at times wouldn't, the, the better teams really defended well, but the lower teams didn't defend great. But this league is just uh, similar in that. Uh, probably a little bit more small ball in, in, in the big sky compared to the, the Summit League. There's probably more traditional uh, guys who play inside out. So we'll have to get used to that. You know, but at the same time, we want to be able to bring our style of basketball and hopefully yeah. teams will have to adapt to us as well. Yeah. We touched on it earlier, your transition history in North Dakota is, you know, you, you've had some experience in this matter. How much will you lean on that as you're leading this team into a new conference now for really the fourth time in your career as a head coach? Yeah, just yeah. It, it's once you mentioned, I'd, I'd kind of just put my head down and just keep growing, mm -hmm. trying to grow and grind through it. But yeah, it's we've been through it before. We've been through the new guy on the block, and it's just the more we can focus on ourselves and worrying about not worrying about other people and what they're doing. I think that's the biggest thing, you know, just trusting what we're doing every day and and, and embracing the successes, but also embracing the the the, the learning opportunities and and realize that we got to continue to get better. So. Just as much as we talked about before, though, a lot of the learning too is just the travel, getting yeah. familiar with the travel. Mm -hmm. Where are we traveling to? You know, what's what's going to be a blessing? Not tr playing in time zone changes and not playing in altitude, mm -hmm. which is not a lot of people talk about. But that is a struggle when you come from the Midwest and you're going west. So, um, and just getting used to the venues and the consistent officiating, which we saw a lot of Pac-12 officials mm -hmm. now. It's Big Ten, obviously Summit League and Horizon and Mo Valley. So, it's it's a complete learning, but. Uh, 
you know what, I think we've done every step we've made, we've, we've kept it the same. Just, just focus on what you can control in the process and, and feel good about you know, the, the system that you have in place. You touched on the travel as we look at the non-conference schedule. I think a date that a lot of UND fans are excited about, November the 14th, you get to go to Rupp Arena and play Kentucky. There's a, there's a lot of games on that non-conference list that I think your team has got to be excited about to get to go and travel to. Yeah, I mean, I'm a, I'm a basketball junkie, uh, have been forever, but the Kentuckys of the world, we played Kansas, we played Indiana, I, you know, obviously my former boss is at UCLA. I'm, I'm big on the Blue Bloods and just the experience. Yes, the game is important, but the experience of that and going to Rupp Arena with 23,000 for North Dakota. Uh, and I know uh, teams in this league have played at Duke, and they they played some high-level teams too. I just one, we got to continue to brand this league. It's such a good league. But two, these kids will never, probably won't remember the score, but they're going to remember that environment, and that opportunity, and that to me, it's bigger than basketball. It's one, it's our job to teach them the history behind the game, and those opportunities with that is what's going to teach them. That's a, a big matchup there, certainly. And you look at yeah, the Summit League Big Sky Challenge Series as well. You get to take on Idaho this year and Montana State. So there's still some of that familiarity yeah, built that's, in as well. Uh, I'm so grateful, one, our league is working with that because people don't always know behind the scheduling. It's, it's a bear to get games uh, at this level. And then the Dakotas are in our league. So anytime we can renew those things and have those opportunities against quality opponents, Montana State's going to be outstanding. Idaho's got a great tradition. So I'm just grateful that our league is gotten creative because we need that creativity just to continue to get quality home games or just quality competition games that our fan base can recognize with and that's um, that's obviously something that we're going to continue to work through but I'm excited about those opportunities. Yeah. Well a couple questions now from the folks online. Elena, Elena Lanson standing by with our Ask the Coach segment. Uh oh. Hey coach, fans <laughs> asked this question of Coach Brewster too but what's the biggest difference between the two conferences in style of play? Biggest difference? Um, I mentioned a little bit before. I think uh, this league has a little bit more inside-out attack. I think that as we were further along in the Big Sky, teams were playing a lot more small ball, four, four guards and a forward. Um, but I think uh, the, the game itself has continued to evolve and change. It's more positionless. I think even the Summit League does that. There's a lot of ball screen action. So we're, we're going to be very similar in that aspect. But uh, hopefully it will be a little bit different. We want to be able to bring our style and our brand, our flavor to the league that will continue to add value. All right, tough one here. How do you handle the demands of being a full-time husband, a full-time dad, and a full-time coach? Wow, how do I handle those demands? That's it's a daily process. I, that's something I always want to continue to get better at. Obviously, uh, three kids that are getting older now, they all got their routines and the activities they're in. And I will admit, I'm a workaholic. I love to work. I love coaching. I love to watch film. But uh, now I'm just always being mindful that I got young young ones in the house that won't be in the house very much longer. So just trying to spend time with them. But uh, you know we're a basketball family. My wife uh, lives and breathes it as well. Love being around our players. But uh, you know I think it's just a thing as a family we try to do a good job of it. Just uh, you know for me it's a stress release just being around them to be able to get away and and, and really um, you know obviously be present with what they're, what's going on in their lives. Yeah, finding that balance, always important. Something you do very well, certainly, and have done so over the course <laughs> of your career. Well, Brian, hey, thanks again so much for joining us yeah. this morning. Best of luck in the summer like this year. We appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you. Brian Jones. Greg Steeman is staying here. Brian Sean is taking my spot. He's talking with Marin Walsif of NDSU Women's Hoops. That's coming up next.